Welcome to Crocodile MTG, your home of competitive, constructed play in all Magic the Gathering formats. Today's video was brought to you by all our wonderful sponsors, affiliates, and patrons. Thank you all for supporting the Crocodile MTG channel, and we hope you enjoy today's video. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jordan with Crocodile MTG here bringing you another Magic the Gathering video. Uh, today we're actually playing Saltai Delirium in Pioneer. This is a deck that pro popped up uh, for the pro uh, Players Tour and uh, it's looked pretty good. Um, I wanted to go ahead and try it out. It looks uh, looks pretty well positioned to fight against the Blue Black Delirium deck. Um, but it also looks decent enough to keep up with the Lotus Field combo. Uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this hand. We did take a mulligan. I think I'm going to ship um, probably this island to the bottom of our library. Actually, maybe I want the island to keep all our colors. I'll probably uh, ship the swamp to the bottom of our library. Uh, and we'll go ahead and lead with a Blooming Marsh and Thoughtseize. I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Uh, and again, put the... So this is a little weird because I want to cast Grizzly Salvage um, and maybe I keep the Fable Passage to just fetch an island later. I do think I, I want to go ahead and put this island on the bottom. So our opponent uh, is on the draw so we're going to go ahead and kick things off with a Thoughtseize. Alright, it looks like our opponent's on Mono White uh, Heliod Combo. Our opponent with quite a few Thraben Inspectors. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead, though, and take the uh, Daxos. Um, I don't think I want to take the Arcanist Owl. And if our opponent's just playing a Thraben Inspector once a turn, I'm not too worried about that one. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pass. Alright, so our opponent, Thraben Inspector, comes down. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and play this Swamp, uh, and we are going to go ahead and Grizzly Salvage. I guess we could have done that at instant speed. I don't think it's going to matter too much. Uh, so you can put a creature or a land card from among them onto, uh, from them into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, so this is a little bit interesting. So we can Seder Wayfinder, we can take Murderous Rider here, or we can take Jace, uh, Vren's Prodigy. Uh, so Jace is a Planeswalker, and I'm leaning towards that, um, especially if our opponent's just Thraben Inspectoring at the moment. Uh, we can flip it pretty quickly, the fact that we're using Grizzly Salvage. Um, the other argument I could see is taking Seder Wayfinder here, hoping to find an Uro um, and a Blue Source next turn, and then we could uh, kind of aggro into an Uro. That being said, I think I'm just going to take the Jace here. It helps us dig for more answers. Uh, I can't play it next turn, but I can play it the turn after. Maybe that's an argument not to take the Jace. So next turn, I'm, I'm probably just playing Courser, though. I'm going to go ahead and take the... Maybe it's just the Murderous Rider. I'm still getting used to the play styles of this deck. This is kind of an interesting decision, because you want to take the Jace because it's powerful, but the... Murderous Riders a removal spell um, as well. And the Seder Wayfinders help. I I think the safe answer is to take the Murderous Rider, but I am going to go ahead and take the chase here. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you think that was correct or not. Um, I think that was a little bit of an interesting decision between the Jace and the Murderous Rider. Seder Wayfinder is tempting, but the fact that I have this Courser and I just want to play that next turn uh, leads me to not really care too much about the uh, mur uh, about the Seder Wayfinders. So our opponent didn't find another Plains in those top two draws. Um, so they are just going to attack in here for one. Oh, and they don't even play... Uh... Ooh, that was a pretty good draw. So I'm going to go ahead here and play Courser. And we have a breeding pool on top. Now, unfortunately, I can't uh, play that out now. So our opponent went ahead and cracked their uh, clue. All right, they did find another planes here, so they are going to get to play out uh, either two Thraben Inspectors if they want, or uh, if they just have Heliod here. 
so this is a little bit of a dangerous position uh, because we don't have any removal at the moment. All right, that's just getting into the trials. So I'm not actually too concerned about that one. All right, this is actually gonna be a pretty good turn. I think I play the tireless tracker here uh, and just immediately make two clues. Because um, we're gonna go ahead and play Fabled Passage and we're gonna be able to gain life uh, and investigate. And I don't think they have anything. Um, and I think we want that Thoughtsies. I apologize if that, I don't know why my audio is being weird, but ever since the uh, most recent MTGO update, uh, it just does that for some reason. Uh, like it gets, it's, it's quiet most of the time, but then it just gets random surges of being loud. All right, so they're taking up the Gideon on the tireless tracker. Uh, they're good. I'm assuming using Nixos here. I guess not. The Raven Inspector. Oh yeah, they'll, they'll use uh, Nixos here to make four, uh, four white mana. All right, and play Arcanist Owl. And our opponent has the ability to go off next turn, so we do have to be aware of that. All right, they found an Elspeth's Conqueror's Death. So they played one Thraven Inspector, an Arcanist Owl, this Plains, and the Nixos. All right, so we know about a Thraven Inspector and an Elspeth, Elspeth Conqueror's Death in our opponent's hand. I do think I want this Thoughtseize though, so I'm not gonna fetch just yet. All right, it's tempting just to play this off the top of a library, and I let's go ahead and start with the Thoughtseize and see what's in our opponent's hand. All right, another Arcanist Owl and Elspeth Conquers Death. And a Thraben Inspector. So I think I want to take the Elspeth Conquer's Death here, um, just because it's a removal spell for our Courser and our Tracker. Uh, and I think together they're actually acting pretty well um, here. I'm going to go ahead and crack this Fable Passage for an island. So we're going to get the Investigate. And I want to go ahead and play out this Jace here, and I'm going to go ahead and play the Blooming Marsh. Uh, again, gain a life, investigate. And there's an Uro on top of our library, so that's actually very good. Um, next turn, we can actually uh, play Uro if we want, flip Jace, and then bring the Uro back. I believe. I guess that de is determined by uh, whether or not... Um, whether or not we have a blue source on top of our library. Because right now we don't have a... Uh, we don't have uh, three blue sources. Uh, and another Arcanist Owl. Jeez. Our opponent is just going ham on this. Our opponent uh, made a bunch of mana with uh, Nykthos and then uh, is playing out Arcanist Owl, Arcanist Owl. All right, there's Helion, and now if they find the combo, I think we're just uh, kind of screwed. All right, Tireless Tracker can't attack. They're going to draw a card. Get in for three. What's on top of our library here? Another Uro. That's interesting. So I actually think I want to flashback Thoughtseize this turn um, after I flip Jace. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead here and play Uro. Now I know this other Uro's on top of our library, which is fine. 
Okay, there's another Thoughtseize. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Breeding Pool. And I think we can actually uh, play this tapped. Sorry, our battlefield's getting a little crazy here. So the stack's down here. I'm going to always yield to this. Um, I'm going to activate Jace here. I'm going to draw and discard this other Uro. And then what I'm going to get to do is Thoughtseize and then flashback Thoughtseize if he has multiple combo pieces. All right, so he just has the Heliod at the moment. He has two planes. Um, so flashing back Thoughtseize doesn't do anything here. I guess I could have played Breeding Pool. Um untapped and then left up the potential for um another like cracking a clue or something um that being said the arcanist owls are probably going to kill jace this turn and i didn't even leave up anything for grizzly salvage or anything uh, that may have been a misplay there, so I guess I'm going to take up on an Arcanist Owl here and pass the turn. Our opponent could just draw a huge Walking Ballista, or draw a Walking Ballista and possibly just kill us. Alright, they're going to draw a card uh, with the clue from a uh, Thraven Instigator. They're going to make a bunch of mana. Alright, there's a Gideon ally of Zendikar. And they could just alt Gideon here. Yeah, get an emblem. This deck's actually looking pretty impressive. Alright, this one has prevent all damage that would be dealt to it. And it's a creature with indestructible. Alright, so this, this deck... You know, it has a beatdown plan in addition to everything else, so. Alright, attack with everything. Are we just dead? So we're taking 10 in the air. I block here, I block the 5-5. Five, five. We can survive at 1. That's unfortunate. Okay. So I have to block here, and I have to chump a uh, tireless tracker with the Skidian. And we survive at one. I don't think there's anything we can draw to even help us get out of this. Like, I think we just play Uro here. And that's like the best thing we can do, and I think that just we just die. nothing we can do here All right, we're gonna go ahead and concede there's no point in like playing Liliana um, and just showing our opponent more information all right going ahead to the sideboard here um, our opponent is mono white so I think we want the abrupt decay here I don't mind the hostage taker and I don't mind the unmoored egos I don't think we need Leyline of the Void. Vivian destroys an enchantment, not exiles, so I don't think we need that. Uh, Cast Down is probably fine as well. Disdainful Stroke is probably unnecessary. Um, it could counter a big Walking Ballista. I guess it can counter a bird as well. All right, Disdainful Strokes, um, I'm half and half on. I don't mind as much. We kind of had a slow start um, 
we didn't really find exactly what we needed. Um, I mean, we found a tireless tracker and a courser, which accumulates a lot of value. Um, but we just have to be uh, a little more considerate of the aggro uh, deck. So Liliana Last Hope, I don't think it's good, but I don't know if it does too much here. Ishkana uh, gums up the board pretty well. I definitely think we leave the Emra cool. I guess Liliana does stop um, in the beginning when our opponent is playing like the Raven Inspectors and things like that. So I guess Liliana is decent. Um, Uro is good here, but I don't mind cutting one of them in this matchup, I think. I guess the question is like, what do we take out? You know, Fatal Push is good in this matchup. Abrupt Decay is good. I mean, our opponent's not running counter spells, I don't think. So maybe I just cut the Abrupt Decays and move to this uh, cast down. And since we're unmoored egoing the combo, uh, maybe I just cut a Titan here. And maybe I just don't play the Hostage Taker. I think the Hostage Taker is decent, though. Alright, I'm going to trim a Seder Wayfinder, maybe. Alright, I'm just not going to... I'm going to trim a Seder Wayfinder. That, that's what I'm going to do. I think the uh, Hostage Taker is good enough to play here. Uh, I would like to play first. Alright, this hand is decent enough to keep. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and keep this. I think I want to traverse for a Swamp here. So our opponent mulligans down the six. Uh, we don't have a Thoughtseize start, which is decent against the combo, but this one's a little bit of a slower combo. Um, they do have aggressive elements uh, if they get a Nykthos out, um, but I think it's slow enough where we can uh, fight it with these Fatal Push and Cast Down a little bit uh, and then get Liliana down. Uh, so we want to go ahead and grab a Swamp here. Next turn we can uh, play the Swamp. Alright, it looks like our opponent's not doing anything. I am going to go ahead and play the Swamp here and leave uh, Fatal Push and Cast Down up. And if our opponent just does nothing here, then I'm just going to jam Liliana next turn. Ooh, Scavenging Ooze. That would have been good for last turn. Alright, Liliana. Tick up. And I guess our game plan right now is just the kind of fight behind this Liliana. Our opponent's actually playing this pretty well. So Knight of the White Orchid, yeah, I was going to say, what our opponent can do here is get their land, because we have three and they have two. Put her on the battlefield untapped, and then play another uh, card here. And that actually, uh, that actually uh, gives them the ability to ramp up a card. Uh, so I think here... I'm going to play the Scavenging Ooze and then leave up the Cast Down Fatal Push. I'm just going to tick up on uh, the Knight of the Way to work good. And pass the turn over to our opponent. I do have to keep in mind uh, Fatal Push is not always for CMC or uh, less. It does have to have something uh, leave the battlefield on my side for it to be for CMC or less. Sometimes that is easy to forget. All right, they're going to make a knight here. So I unfortunately don't think I can kill Gideon this turn. I guess I can with Murderous Rider next turn. All right, so what I'm going to do this turn is Fatal Push the Knight of the White Orchid, and then I'm going to eat it with uh, Scavenging Ooze. All 
right, Thoughtseize was a pretty good draw here. Interesting. So I think I'm going to start with the Thoughtseize. See what's in our opponent's hand. Another Gideon and an Elspeth Conquers Death and an Arcanist Owl. This is unfortunate that we have the Blooming Marsh in hand. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think I'm taking the Elspeth Conquer's death here because I don't want them to exile their Liliana. Um, But I think I actually minus Liliana here. All right, Seder Wayfinder. Do we want the Seder Wayfinder though? I, I guess so. If I didn't take the Seder Wayfinder there, what I was going to do was eat it with Ooze and then uh, cast down the... Alright, there's an Emrakul. I guess we just take the Forest here. I really want that Emrakul to come back, if possible. I think I'm just going to attack our opponent here. Ooh, I guess I don't want to because I didn't tick up on uh, the token. What do they have in their hand? Arcanist Owl, Gideon Plains. All right, I'm just going to pass the turn this turn and plan to get back Emrakul next turn. I assume our, yeah, I was going to say, I assume our opponent starts with the Arcanist Owl here. If they find Heliod, I assume they want that. Ooh, Quarantine Field. That's a good one I haven't seen in a while. Alright, they just make a token. Alright, I'm going to use this time to cast down the Arcanist Owl. Alright, I'm going to minus two Liliana. Uh, I'm going to grab the Emrakul here. There's five card types in Graveyard at the moment. Um, so Emrakul costs uh, seven. No, eight. So here, we're going to end up playing the Blooming Marsh tapped, unfortunately. I am going to go ahead and... Murderous Rider, uh, Swift End the Gideon. And I think Quarantine Field's gonna take most of our cards here, unfortunately. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave up two mana to eat things with Ooze. I might as well attack in here. Go ahead and eat Arcanist Owl. And there's no point in eating anything else at the moment. So if our opponent doesn't play Quarantine Field next turn, um, and they just kill our Lil Liliana, that's actually gonna lower the cost of our Emrakul because a planeswalker will be in our yard. And uh, then if we draw an untapped source, we can actually play. All right, it looks like they are just going to go ahead and jam Quarantine Field here. 
I was hoping they'd just try to kill her Liliana, um, and then we'd be able to just... Unless they just take our creatures here. Alright, they do decide to take the Liliana. So I'm not sure if this matters. I'm going to go ahead and eat the uh, Elspeth Conqueror's death. We're going to go ahead and take our Planeswalker. And we do have five creature types. Maybe I just grab Ishkana from our uh, library and play it next turn. Gum up the board uh, so our opponent can't do anything. Ooh, there's a Jace. So that is tempting also, the play. So here I can traverse for Uro and play the Jace and play the Uro. And then I can probably play Emrakul next turn. Let's do something like that. So we don't know our opponent's full hand. We know they have a Gideon. Uh, so here I want to play... What did I say? Grab Uro. I think that's pretty good here. And then we can play Uro. And then we can play Jace. And if we draw a land that we get to play with Uro, that's even better. So that's pretty good as well. All right, hopefully our opponent doesn't just get the combo off here because I think we're stabilizing pretty well. So we'll see what our opponent decides to do here. Um, they have the Gideon in hand. If they have, I think they're, I mean, they're a handful of mana. I think it takes nine mana total to combo with Walking Ballista and Heliod. So we'll see what our opponent decides to do this turn. Uh, if they play one of the combo pieces, then uh, it's pretty likely we are possibly just dead next turn. Um, all right, so our opponent found another Arcanus Howl. There's the Heliod. And unfortunately it does have... It does have enough devotion to be fine. Alright, there's this Kana. So here's something interesting. If we if we draw a discard with Jace and we find a land that comes in the battlefield untapped, we can actually discard our Nissa here and then play Emrakul this turn. So let's try that. Let's gamble. Come on, untapped land. Fatal push. That's not an untapped land. But that keeps us alive, question mark? I think that does. Wait, does Jace exile also? All right, discard a card, exile Jace, then return him to the battlefield. So we can kill this Arcanist Owl too if we want. Uh, I don't think killing the Arcanist Owl is what we want though. Discarding the Nissa feels weird, but I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Now I can flashback the Thoughtseize here. I can just play Ishkana. I, I think I have to flashback the Thoughtseize here. And at least see if the Ghost is clear. Alright, there's another Arcanist Owl. I think that's probably what we take, because otherwise I could just find a, find a Ballista. And I think as long as they don't draw Ballista off the top, I think we're okay. We'll go ahead and play the uh, Ishkana here. And 
that'll at least gum up the board a little bit. Um, and then hopefully we'll get the Emrakul. The nice thing about them playing Heliod um, out for us is if we find their combo piece, don't tell me they drew it off the top. Oh gosh, okay, here's an Arcanist Owl. We have to draw a land. A rest in peace, wow. Okay, I was not expecting that. I didn't even get a chance to flashback my Uro. Okay. Bye-bye graveyards. That was pretty, pretty clever from our opponent. All right, so they have Gideon. Uh, they're attacking Jace. I'm gonna go ahead and block. Shkana, okay. One life for each spider we control. All right, here's an unmoored ego, so we can at least protect ourselves from the combo. Uh, let's go ahead and I guess tick up on the Heliod. All right, let's go ahead and kill the combo. Walking Ballista. All right, that's pretty good here. So what else does our opponent have in their deck while we're looking in here? All right, in hand we know they have Gideon. Uh, Dactos, Anafenza, Knight of the White Orchid, a bunch of lands, Rest in Peace, Stasis, the Raven Inspector, mm. Elspeth. Okay, so it looks like they're a mono white uh, beatdown, like a white weenie with a combo potential finish. Is that one selected? One, two, three, four. Okay. Four cards enter exile. Good. All right. So we'll go ahead and pass here. So now our opponent does have to kill us, and I think we have the potential to stabilize, which is going to be pretty good. Just looking at our sideboard here, seeing what all I uh, took out. We definitely want, if we get a game three, uh, we definitely want our... Ooh, a stasis snare. Are they going to take Ishkana? Okay. Attack everything at Jace or attack everything at me? Jace at Jace. All right, so they definitely want Jace dead. I really want this other Arcanist Owl dead, but I, I our opponent has five devotion just in their enchantments. Uh, I should have definitely brought in the Reclamation Sage, and I think there's argument to bring in the uh, Vivian as well, and keeping the Abrupt Decays in. Uh, that was my mistake for taking them out. Uh, let's go ahead here and is there any way I can keep my Jace around? I don't think so at the moment. We'd have to just thin out our blockers. Another creature gains lifelink, sure. Another creature gains lifelink, sure. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this one. I don't think there's a way we're winning this game. Even if we stabilize, we only have five minutes left on the clock.
I just don't think there's any way. And Battlefield tapped. Not a great start to showing off the Salt Eye Delirium deck. I don't really think we uh, found what we wanted in either game. Uh, it just kind of didn't work out. They are a pretty aggressive deck, though, so, uh, I mean, it's an impressive showing from the Heliod deck, for sure. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find a land. I think playing that Emrakul that turn would have been an extremely powerful play in our favor. Sure. Uh, block here so we don't die. Gideon comes down, makes a token. He just has everything ready to kill us. Uh, we have a Thoughtseize. They have no cards. We're going to concede. And good game opponent. Uh, they did best us there, unfortunately. 0-2-2. Uh, to two. I didn't really think there was a way of coming back. Um, and if we were able to stabilize and come back in that game, I don't think we would have had time to complete a game three. Um, so that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Mana Traders, for allowing me to rent this deck. Um, especially since I didn't want to go out and buy all the cards to, you know, start off 0-2. Uh, everyone, go check out Mana Traders. If you're not using them and you play MTGO, I would highly recommend it. Uh, you can save it. They're a card rental service, and they're really easy to use. And if you sign up and use promo code CROCODILE, you actually save 15% uh, off your first three months. So go check them out. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully uh, the next few matches will be a little bit better. Um, thank you all so much for watching, even though we uh, completely biffed that game, uh, match one. And I'll see you in the next match. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Also, check out the description below for more Magic the Gathering content. This was Jordan with Crocodile MTG, and we will see you next time.